Hey coach, before getting into the offseason festivities, we got to go over a couple of things following last season. We have some news regarding some of our players and transferring. Tyson Steele is the first on offense. You know, he had a pretty good career with us, but he just isn't happy with his role and he's decided to move on to a new school. Joshua Wilson is another guy. I'm disappointed by this because we recruited him as one of our top recruits. He's informed me that he will be transferring along with J. Ron Parrish, who will be going to East Gotham. He let me know he wants to play with his custom cousin, Justin Parrish. And then Kyle Ward, it's been a rumor that he's been wanting to transfer and I kind of believe it a little bit just because, you know, he's been a guy that we recruited to have a bigger role in the defense and it just seemed like it just hasn't worked out. I think Brian York's assurgence uh, through all of this, I think that's really hurt his playing time. So he's moving on as well. But some good news. We have our freshmen now on campus and they've been in the weight room. The seniors now have been mentoring them and man, Storm. I mean, he is going to be dangerous. He was making Bryant Britt look bad. You know how hard that is. This guy's going to be good. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome to the offseason coming off of our best season here in the River Cats dynasty. And we start out here at Coaching Changes. We have a huge one. Trayvon Davis is now moving on as he gets to go back to his alma mater and coach at Tulane. Remember, he started out as a white tail quarterback and it wasn't pretty. We didn't have a very good start to that series. I think the Rivercat series was a lot better, but now Trayvon Davis moves to his alma mater. Remember, he was a quarterback there. He transferred there. Didn't really do too well because his senior year was cut short by injury, but he gets to coach there and maybe be a better coach than he was player. Now we have an additional transfer. Kai Keone actually is going to transfer to the East, Eastern Michigan, East Michigan. And now we're short another safety. So we have to kind of shore up our safety in the next uh, recruiting class. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So recruiting is easy in the offseason, like always in this series. I don't have many guys that go after in the offseason. We're going all in on Josiah McClure. He's our last custom recruit. And after going all in on him, he will commit to the team. He is the future at middle linebacker. I don't know. Honestly, like a lot of the guys that are young on our team, if they're really going to start in the future. I mean, there's a big question mark. A lot of guys we just haven't seen play on the field. And that's the beauty of moving on from the original walk-ons. So we do end up with a middle of the road class here this season after season four. But, you know, a couple of our opponents here, look at them. I mean, they recruited very well. The White Tails are 13, and they aren't even our highest here in this series as Metropolis ends up at number three. Man, what what, what a turnaround has been for Metropolis. I mean, they've pretty much had that philosophy of running the ball. They stuck to it, and now they have the number three ranked class. Oh, yeah. And San Diego State has the number six class in the country. Remember that Davis Lee has committed to play there as well, and he is in line to be their starting quarterback. So going into the position changes and training results, we really only have two guys that really need to change positions, positions, and those are two athletes. But I did actually switch Preston Kinney over to the correct end because I believe we had him at the wrong end last year, and that's kind of why he started out slow and then kind of started doing well. So he would he's going to be playing where Desmond Edwards was playing for most of the year last year. So that's the only change on the defensive line. But we have two athletes here, Jamal Wyatt, and uh, the other guy we just put at running back. And Wyatt seems like he's more of a safety, and I don't want to put him at running back because he could have been a running back too. But I have a long log jam at running back. I'm definitely taking a year off of recruiting running backs. So just going into training results, you know, a lot of our guys improved a lot. And quarterback is a position that I'm not sure about right now, but I have Gunnar Johnson penciled in as the starter and I think that Ty Featherstone is the best throwing quarterback but he's not mobile at all that's definitely a minus to him because he is tall he is big but he can't really move and honestly when I when a play breaks down I need a third down scramble I need that out of a quarterback so just looking at our running backs now you know JJ Hollinson is going to need to step up a lot this season 
and I'm just looking at what he's done. His catching is horrible. It's at 22. I, I, don't, I don't expect that him to be in on passing downs, really. He's going to be running the ball. He's got 91 trucking. I didn't expect him to be that high. I thought that Jamari Tyson was a little uh, stronger than him, but it seems like Hollinson is a power back that's going to be hitting the hole hard and running people over this year. I can't wait to see that. He's going to have a huge year to me. Looking at receiver, Stephen Ford actually goes up plus five. He is going to be on the outside. He goes up to 89 speed. I love that. He went up plus two in speed, and he looks pretty good. He's got 78 catching, which lands him as the best on the team. His route running is definitely it's definitely low at 60, but TC3, he's healthy. He's going to be in the slot. No competition with Adrian West this year. We do have the freshman Zane's. Uh, Zane Storm, but he's going to probably play on the outside. I'm not going to play him all the time in the slot. Maybe about 10% of the snaps he's on the field, he'll play in the slot. But that's just because if I want a mismatch on a linebacker or something like that, you'll see about him a little bit later in this episode. Now, Xavier Gonzalvo at tight end goes up. Andrews goes up. Clue goes up. I love tight ends. I mean, this is tight end you here. We just take any tight end and make them good, and that's what we want to do. I love tight ends in these offenses, and I definitely use up to four. I mean, just think about last year. I mean, we had Isaiah Ford, who was a senior. He got on the field pretty minimally, but then I used Klug, Andrews, and Gonzalvo pretty equally, and I love doing that, keeping our tight ends fresh. It's definitely crucial in the run game as well. So at left tackle, the red shirt freshman Colton Hollywood is going to be the starter here. And this is going to be his first year. I'm excited for that. I want to see what he can do. He's a good pass blocker. Not too bad of a run blocker, but he's not the greatest, obviously. A new center as well, Sully Lowenberg. He will be the starter at center. We will miss another senior at center. And he was one of the best guys on our team, to be honest. Then at right guard, you know, Petra Chetley did have a good season last year. He's a better pass blocker than Ryan Mathis. But I really, really want to run the ball this year. And I have to use J.J. Hollinson in a big way and Jabari Blaze. Both of them are going to get some carries quite a bit. And so is Jamari Tyson. I mean, I'm going to use probably four running backs here in this offense. And we'll have to see later what offense we will end up with because our offensive coordinator left. Preston Kinney. Look at this offseason, plus four in finesse moves, plus two in power moves, plus four in hit power, and plus four in play recognition. I like it. I want to see what he's going to do in the game this year because him and Malik King are probably going to go at it. And Matt Eaglo is still on the roster. He didn't really get in too much last year, but he's a guy that, you know, is kind of a good backup just in case a guy gets injured or something. I think he's a good uh, third string end. Now, Jermaine Neal will go into his second full year as a uh, full-time participant. Remember, in his freshman year, we registered him. And last year, he didn't do too much, and that was mainly because Desmond Edwards got out to such a hot start, so he didn't really get to touch the field too much. But at defensive tackle, it's going to be interesting. We have J.J. Taylor and Jonathan Thousand, but J.J. Taylor is going to be huge for us this year. He led our team in sacks with seven last year. I'm looking forward to him. Now, uh, Corey McDaniels actually will uh, be the backup to Eddie McMack. Aiden Adams actually gets cut just because uh, he was an original walk-on. And I don't know why he's still on the team. So I, I believe he was just registered his first year just because the computer just did it. So I'm going to cut him and it's going to act like a graduation. Um, but looking at left outside, I like our guys here, Corey McDaniels and Eddie McMack. They're both really, really good. I like Eddie McMack a lot. He's made a bunch of big plays for us. He's not in jeopardy of losing that job. Odin Blue will get the start at middle linebacker. This is a position I'm slightly worried about just because I don't I know how good Odin Blue is, but missing Javon Warren there is just gonna be different. And now we have Odin Blue there, but Jason Kron is an athletic linebacker. He's got 87 speed, and that's gonna be his calling card, as you see here. And I think that, you know, having him on the field is going to be interesting because we have a sideline, a sideline linebacker who can cover pretty well. So looking at a right outside linebacker, you know, this is a position that I'm not sure about yet. We have Osiris Hovick, who is a freshman, but Jake Braun, who had a good first year playing. He had a sack. He had a, a defensive touchdown interception, and he had a pretty good season. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. 
he will have to rotate with Hovick and also Jason Jason McNeil, who has very good zone coverage. So when there's like a coverage package that I have on the field, I think that the both both of the Jasons will be on the field. The linebacker, middle linebacker, and the outside linebacker. Now, cornerback is kind of interesting. We do have a quite a few transfers at cornerback, as you can see. Bomaye is going to be sticking around. He was a really good slot guy last year. I think he did an awesome job when he took over. And one thing I was worried about with him was tackling. And he showed that he could tackle. I was pleasantly surprised. And just looking at him, he's got 85 zone, which is actually higher than Brian Britt. I'm looking for Brian Britt to have an eight interception season. That's, a, that's my goal for him. I need to shoot high for him. He's going to be one of the captains. He won't have the captain number, but I consider him a captain. He is a leader on that defense. Now, Brian York, this is who will have the captain number. I mean, is there any debate there? I mean, it's between him and Brian Britt, but York is just a playmaker. He does everything on the field. I, I bet you if I could put him on defensive line, he would have a seven-sack season. I think he's that good. Jacob Draken and Ja'Cory Reed will both play at safety. Draken will also play in that nickel position where uh, Bomaye will also play. Those two will rotate there. And then we have a few freshman cornerbacks coming in. I'm not really sure who's going to take the job on the right side. Remember, that right side guards the number one receiver on the opposing team. And it's going to be a freshman more than likely, or even Bomaye or Draken. You never know. I don't know who's going to be over there. We're going to have to just test the waters to see how our guys do. Now, the big announcement here in the offseason, we will be moving to the SEC. Now, I know a lot of you guys said it may be a little too early. I know some of you guys disagree here, but I just want to keep this dynasty fresh, and I want different competition. I don't want to be playing the same teams every year. So we did move over some of the best teams in the MAC, and I replaced them with the weakest teams in the SEC. So Kentucky's gone, Vanderbilt's gone. But then we also added two additional teams, one to each side as well. So there's six in each division. This is going to be an interesting conference. I can honestly see at the end of the season, the top 10 being literally six of the 10 teams. That'd be interesting. So here is J. Ron Parrish here with East Gotham, who he did transfer to. Uh, I am planning on playing East Gotham and the Whitetails uh, probably next season. Not this season, but we'll have to see. Kyle Ward is going to transfer to Metropolis. So he might go in and be the starter day one. And that is interesting. He goes to one of our rivals and a team that really is on the up. I mean, they had that number three ranked recruiting class. They add Kyle Ward. Tyson Steele moves on to LSU. So stays in the conference. I'm looking forward to seeing what Tyson Steele does with LSU because he is probably going to play in the slot. And another guy that will play in the slot, but on the defensive side at the nickel position, Joshua Wilson moves over to DBU. This is a big move for LSU because not only do they already have a bevy of cornerbacks, they take one of our best and maybe the guy that was sitting there waiting for his turn, but he couldn't be patient and he moves on to LSU. So just looking at quarterbacks, and this is what I was talking about, Ty Featherstone is a pocket passer he's 56 speed and you can just see the speed difference between Gunnar Johnson Wilson and Featherstone I mean it's literally 20 points and like I said Featherstone is the better quarterback throwing the football but he's got lower awareness too so I don't know if that accuracy will reign true but Gunnar Johnson I think is penciled in as the starter right now he will wear that captain number as well because he has been a senior and a guy that's been on this team and been here the the whole way at receiver, Chris Whiteside is a guy to look out for. He is a big target guy. Right now, he's our second highest rated receiver. And Zane Storm is also there as well. We have a lot of 66 overall receivers. It's going to be interesting. I like Isaiah Thomas too. He's going to be in quite a bit. It's really going to be everybody that's a receiver on our roster touching the field. Maybe not Trey Frazier. He's more of a returner. He will probably be our punt returner this season. But then looking at defense, Dominique Edwards now joins the defensive line along with Jonathan Thousand, who will be next to J.J. Taylor, who, com who comes off of a seven-sack season, and he's going to be good. And these are the ratings here. He ends up at 69 overall. Remember, I only unlock 50% of the ratings when I'm scouting, so that's why I 
and revealing those right now. And then looking at our middle linebackers, you know, Josiah McClure actually is one overall better. But I think that I'm going to redshirt him because I want to save him. I, I really do. And I don't think there's much of a skill gap between him, Odin Blue, and also the other Jason. So we're, it's going to be interesting. Cornerback is probably going to be the position I'm going to have the most uh, issue with evaluating right away just because we're going to have to throw somebody out there and see what they do. DJ Durrell, Brenton Jackson, Dearberto, Tao I Dare You will also probably be complete competing for the outside job tells i dare you is more of a nickel corner so we'll have to see how he does so since we have a new offensive coordinator we will randomize the playbook and let's see where we land we land on oregon state i mean are you kidding me out of any playbook we could have landed on it's oregon state the playbook that we started with here in this dynasty but then we roll again and we end up on northwestern so i believe northwestern is a spread playbook so we will be checking that out here towards the end of the season. Now I highlighted that Gunnar Johnson will get that captain number. You see him there with number one. He is a senior. And if he does go out throughout this whole year, he'll be a one year starter, one and done. And then Brian York gets that captain number, number 30. So let's just see how they look along with the other guys out on the field. So let's just check it out. We're here in our indoor facility that we built a couple years ago. The first pass is out to the right side. It's, it's Zane Storm. He gets the first catch of the practice, and that's Britton Jackson on the tackle on the outside, out to the left side. And now here is Storm again, this time guarded by Bryant Britt. I like it. I mean, I like Storm a lot. He is going to be a playmaker on this offense, and it's definitely different seeing a smaller receiver on the outside and here he is again in the slot this time, getting down the right sideline, this time beating the other freshman, Brenton Jackson, who gets beat again. And I want to see what Brenton Jackson can do. I like his uh, skill set. He's got a tough task with guarding maybe the fastest guy in the nation right now as a freshman. But here is Dominique Edwards getting in for a sack. It's going to be interesting. You know, I, I looked over this playbook. It's got quite a bit of option as well. So you're going to see Jamal Wilson in quite a bit and that's one thing that i'm looking forward to to be honest seeing both quarterbacks play here's a deep shot and stephen ford has got to hold on to that one that was an absolutely perfect throw by gunner johnson here's another throw out to left side tc3 he's healthy this year i want to see what he can do in the slot like i said zane storm is I, I gotta be honest he's an outside receiver even at five foot seven he's an outside receiver he plays like an outside guy he does not play like a slot guy i'm looking forward to seeing storm tc3 is going to be tearing it up in the slot i don't have a backup slot guy right at this moment i think that maybe white side could be that guy he's more of an outside guy but he can catch the ball over the middle there he is on the right side as we hand off and now let's check out our run game a little bit here is hollinson taking it back in that cutback lane and he picks up a first down on that carry. And I want to see what this running game can do. It's going to look a lot different. We're going to have better run plays in this playbook because last year's playbook was an air raid offense. And this one's more of a spread. So you're going to get a lot of different looks here from Hollinson, from uh, Jabari Blaze, and also from some other guys that we have that are going to be running the ball as well. Tyson will be. And then a little bit of everybody. I'll try to throw Zane Storm even in the backfield. Even Jacob Dracken might get some carries. You never know. And then Brian Parrish, the fullback, who's lined up to the right of Gunnar Johnson right now. He's going to get a few goal line carries more than likely. We'll have to see. So I'm looking forward to this season, especially playing against some SEC schools. I think it's going to be a big challenge as J.J. Hollinson gets his longest run of the practice. He almost broke that one. That one was about, what, a 30-yard gain on that one. And Hollinson looks better. He looks faster. He looks quicker. I think that he's going to have a really good season. And I think that this defensive line is definitely making it tough in this practice, though. You can see a lot of guys are making plays. Look at Edwards. He comes into this season as a freshman impact player. I don't think I've ever seen that. He already has the impact star under him as Hollinson breaks to the right side this time. And this might actually be his longest run. He's pushed out of bounds by Britton Jackson. But look at Edwards. I mean, he just destroyed. Uh, that was Parrish on that one, the fullback. I mean, he is going to be really, really good. And there's J.J. Taylor getting in on that one. 
And I want to just take a look at some one-on-ones, but I can't even get the ball off. Look at J.J. Taylor getting after the quarterback. And you can just see he's in there on every single play. I think that Taylor, along with Edwards, are going to have huge seasons. And then watch out for Thousand, who's right now there at defensive tackle right next to Dominique Edwards on the left side of the defensive line. He's going to be good. Gunnar Johnson, I look, I'm look, i looking forward to this. I mean, he's made a couple of missed throws in this practice, but a lot of just dimes. Look at this throw. I mean, that is just right on the money, right where you want it. And that is a first down throw. Look at these throws. I mean, it's right there. I mean, this is what I'm looking for for Gunnar Johnson. He's got to be the leader. And you can just see a lot of these throws. Look at the touch on this one. That was perfect, and Storm does drop it. But it's just going to be interesting. You know, Johnson, I think, is going to have a huge year throwing the ball. I think Hollinson is going to have a big year running the ball. I mean, yeah, Hollinson. And then I think that Tyson will actually have quite a few touchdowns as well as a power back. We'll have to see. But I am excited. And I think this is going to be a really special year for this team. Here's a nice throw to the sideline. That's Storm. And look at these throws. I mean, Johnson is making the throws. He's throwing it with zip, too. That's something that Phoenix Frazier could not do. He has a definitely a stronger arm than Phoenix Frazier. And look at these throws. I mean, that is just pinpoint perfect throw on that one. I'm looking forward to the season that Gunnar Johnson is going to have. And we will end the practice on that throw. You can just see just a nice ending to that practice session. So our schedule this year will look a lot harder than it's all ever, ever been. I mean, look at this. We start out with M-Stam. We go on the road and play M-Stam. We will play them probably for the last time here in this series. I think that rivalry is just about dead. I, I just think that M-Stam is not making progress at all building their team. But the, third, the second game of the season will be at San Diego State. So versus Davis Lee in that top six recruiting class in that top 15 team. Wow, I'm excited for that game. Then we start SEC play with Arkansas, LSU, Missouri Tech, Alabama, Metropolis, and Auburn. I mean, that stretch right there is going to be so tough. I'm looking forward to it, though, especially playing Alabama, Metropolis, and Auburn back to back to back and Missouri Tech and LSU. I mean, that is just insane. I got to admit, that's insane. I'm wondering how good Auburn and Alabama are going to be this year because now they have some new blood. Metropolis is going to be good. You already know they're going to be good. Missouri Tech is always good as well. And then we end the season with a couple of uh, conference games with Ole Miss, who's actually top 12 this year, and then Tulsa State, who I moved over. Um, they were the, probably the team that I kind of questioned a little bit moving over to the SEC, but I did move them as well. I think they deserved it. So they will be there, and we will finish off our season against them. So that will do it here. Uh, the opener should be coming out pretty soon. Um, I'm just finishing up the recruits and everything, so I'm looking forward to this season. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. The original walk-ons are gone. A new wave of recruits are in. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.